Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some really intriguing discoveries in regards to the very famous experiment involving light. The double slit experiment that to some extent you see right here. Although in this case, for the first time ever, instead of producing the typical pattern that is usually observed when light passes through two different tiny slits, creating the famous interference pattern that you see right here and that we're going to discuss in a few seconds, the scientists were able to create something entirely different, an interference pattern in time, not in space. Which obviously sounds kind of cool, sort of mind-blowing, but also needs to be explored a little bit more. But before we talk about the actual discovery that you can find in the description below, let's briefly discuss this experiment and its main purpose. The experiment that was originally conducted by the British Thomas Young in order to prove something that the scientists were kind of arguing about back in the days. Is light a particle or a wave? And by using this particular experiment, he was essentially able to produce the interference pattern that's sort of expected from a typical wave. Thus kind of confirming the light's wave-like nature. Something that was generally accepted for a pretty long time until Einstein came along and basically said, oh yeah, by the way, it's kind of both. It's a wave and a particle. And that sort of blew everyone's mind, but that's a different story for another day. Because it turns out these patterns are also produced by pretty much anything involving any kind of a particle. It does not have to be light, you can also produce these by, for example, using electrons, using atoms, or even using certain molecules. As a matter of fact, one of the larger single atom molecules out there, Buckminster fullerene, also known as a buckyball, but basically contains 60 different carbons, was shown to produce a very similar pattern as far back as 1999, with the experiment then repeated several times, resulting in these beautiful interference patterns you see right here. This image was even used as a cover page for one of the issues of Nature Nanotechnology magazines. So basically, particles can be waves, waves can be particles, and you can sort of create the interference pattern because according to quantum mechanics, very very tiny things will usually have a kind of a probability of existence in a certain location instead of an actual position that you can know for sure. But it looks like after 220 years since the original demonstration by Thomas Young, the scientists discovered something else really unusual and really unexpected about certain types of light passing through certain types of slits. In this new paper that you can find in the description below, they created a very similar pattern that seems to also occur in time. But in this case, instead of changing the actual shape or producing waves with various peaks or various locations where things cancel out, creating the brighter and darker fringes, they were able to create something similar where instead it's the frequency or the color that changes. But changes in time, not in space. But in order to create this pattern or this interference, they essentially had to come up with what the scientists refer to as time slits. And so instead of two physical holes or two physical slits, these would be slits adjusted in time in order to change the reflectivity of material. Material known as indium tin oxide, found in a lot of different phone screens, that's able to change its reflectivity from being transparent to reflective when interacting with certain types of light, which basically allowed them to create a way for the light to pass in certain conditions and a way for the light to be reflected in other conditions. But in this case, the change in reflectivity is not instant. It takes a tiny, tiny fraction of a second, specifically 10 femtoseconds, which essentially creates a time slit with a permanent frequency that then starts affecting the light itself. And so by shining a kind of a laser pump, to produce these time slits, this allowed certain other types of light to go through, but only during certain time. But by then using a second pump laser, it started to create these unusual interference patterns as if light was passing through two spatial double slits, but instead of changing the shape, it was changing frequencies. Here's maybe one way of trying to visualize this, where we have the spatial slits producing the interference in space, and the temporal slits producing the interference in time. And I know it's kind of difficult to maybe imagine this, so maybe let's try again. In the original experiment, what changed was the angle at which the light comes out from the slits, with waves then interfering with each other, creating certain locations where the waves were much brighter, producing much more luminosity. But in this new experiment, instead of changing direction, the light changes frequency, essentially creating a variety of color inside a single beam of light. And so the brightness stays the same, the amplitude doesn't change, but the frequency or the color does. Which is sort of mind-blowing when you actually think about it. I mean, at this point, it would be really fun to see if someone can actually combine both experiments to produce a kind of a shift in both time and space and to maybe create some kind of a very beautiful prism-like effect, but the effect that would be kind of similar to the interference pattern produced by regular double-slit experiments. 
But one of the reasons that scientists believe it's even possible in this case is because of the unusually fast response time of this very strange material used in smartphones. It was apparently 10 to maybe even 100 times as fast as expected, allowing it to shift from reflective to transparent in just 10 femtoseconds. A really, really small unit of time. And so because of this really high speed of change from reflectivity to transparency, it was able to produce the beautiful pattern the scientists observed. But the scientists are still not entirely clear why it's able to do it so fast, even compared to modern theories. Which basically means that not all materials are going to be able to produce this unusual pattern, but which also means that we might have discovered a completely new phenomenon that one day could find use in a lot of groundbreaking technology. For example, it could one day be used as a kind of a memory for a lot of laser-based quantum computers, or to produce various metamaterials where control of light through both space and time is required. Some scientists even suggested that it might take us a little bit closer to recreating actual human brain. In essence, allowing us to recreate neuromorphic computing that happens inside the brain itself. While at the same time, this can also be a perfect material to start demonstrations on various time reflections and another concept known as time crystals. The concept that you can learn more about in the description below, which was originally proposed by Frank Wilczek back in 2012, describing a time-based analog to a typical crystal, where the orderly arrangement of atoms doesn't just happen in space, it also happens in time. Something that might be important for, for example, quantum computing. One day it might become a kind of a quantum computer memory. Although that video in the description describes this concept a little bit better. This has already been shown by several different experiments to be real and can even be produced in various quantum computers. But by combining this concept with the time-based interference pattern, the future studies might actually discover some other absolutely ridiculous phenomena nobody can even imagine right now. So technically this is one of the more intriguing and potentially more groundbreaking discoveries in the last few years. But exactly where this leads just yet, nobody knows. Because this is pretty much a brand new discovery, this discovery was only made in April of 2023, which means that only time will tell where all this leads. But it also means that we're going to be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.